Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, today or this video is the short version of the book two prize rankings for the quarterfinal round. I also have my long version, uh, which turned out to be 34 minutes long. So I thought I would do a short one for people who just want a quick update on what my rankings were. I judged nonfiction. Um, I'm not sure which group it was now. Uh, I just, I can't remember. Sorry about that. Uh, but I thought I would come and just share the rankings since uh, when this goes live will be when uh, Robert has announced the actual what is moving on. So the first thing is this particular group of books was phenomenal. I would not be upset if any of these ones moved on. There wasn't one that I was like, oh man, I just don't want that one to move forward. Uh, where in fiction, last round there was. And so yeah, let's jump right into it. So number six is a Little Devil in America. Yeah, this book, if you're not familiar with it, goes through and talks about a lot of different black performances, uh, black uh, performers, and kind of just different works that and how they were perceived. Uh, lots and lots of wonderful information in it. Unfortunately for me, the format of it was not my favorite because it had some sections that were more of a stream of consciousness kind of section where it would say, and this, and that, and this, and that just didn't work for me. It also was told kind of in the form of essays, which again, is not my favorite you know, delivery mechanism. And so um, it's more my personal preference than a commentary on whether or not this book was good or bad. I would not say this is a bad book. It just wasn't my kind of book from a style perspective which is why I ended up putting it in my number six spot okay so the number five spot is going to be diary of a young naturalist by Dara McNulty. So this one uh, is one of the books that it has faded from my memory pretty quickly uh, as far as kind of what they were trying to do. It is told, told in the form of journal entries. It is one that, uh, you know, it was really interesting from, it. he's, uh, I believe, autistic, if I remember correctly, and there was a lot of information about how certain small things really impacted him, uh, which I thought was amazing. This author is was also, I believe, 14 when they wrote this book, which was amazing, absolutely incredible, super impressed with that. It's just the journal entry kind of part of how to tell it was again not really my favorite he came from a blog background and so you can kind of see that in the book a little bit because people encouraged him to do a book based on the success of the blog also a very young activist um it, it, which is an incredible uh, activist in regards to the environment which is incredible as well but it did end up in my number five spot so number four is the last book i read which is the doctor's blackwell by janice p namura so this one is one that was um, kind of fizzled out a little bit at the end. It really documents the time of Elizabeth, Elizabeth Blackwell and her sister Emily. Elizabeth Blackwell was the first woman in the United States to receive a medical degree, uh, which is amazing. It really talks about her process and how she kept getting rejected. Um, it's really the ending of it for whatever reason. I just, I, I, it fizzled for me a little bit. And that could just be kind of how their careers kind of ended was not this big, you breakthrough in science and this big breakthrough in things, um, you, their hospital ended up closing that they created. I think that just led to me not, not really being super engaged on this one. Fun fact, so it's May 11th when I'm recording this little short summary. I have the long video, like I said, I think I said that, you can go watch if you want to get more information but this was actually shortlisted for the pulitzer in nonfiction biography this year which i thought was amazing i love that the the topic is getting some uh, some recognition as being at least shortlisted so very interesting but it is in my number four spot my number three two and one um, two and three have bounced around back and forth as far as which ones I wanted where. And a number one has been in the number one spot since I read it. Um, so the number three spot is 
All In by Billie Jean King. If you had told me ahead of time that this was going to be in my top three, I would have said, really? It's about tennis. I, I don't know tennis. I don't like tennis. I don't play tennis. Um, the one time I tried was really a disaster. I knew Billie Jean King's name, but nothing else about her. And it was just very engaging, Billie Jean King's life. Uh, she is an incredible ambassador for tennis, for um LGBTQ plus rights for just a wide variety of different pieces and her story was really fascinating and how she had to fight for women equality in tennis. So it's really interesting that I had the Doctors Blackwell and this one, even though this was more of an autobiography about Billie Jean King, um, but it did document and talk through a powerful woman struggling to get equal pay, equal time, equal opportunities for women in the sport that she loves, which was tennis. So uh, it is one that the ending was a little bit, uh, you're kind of just not repetitive, but just, it's just slower at the ending where the beginning all the way up to, I believe it's around the battle of the sexes was just one that I was flying through. I'm surprised at how fast I read this book. I really did enjoy it quite a bit. All right, so my number two, <laughs> my number two is the one that has been the hardest book to not talk about up until this week, and you'll see why in a second, but this book, oh, I just wanted to talk about this book when I finished reading it, and it is Empire of Pain, The Secret History of the Sackler Dynasty by Patrick Radden Keefe. This book is infuriating. It really goes through the Sackler dynasty, the Sackler family who own Purdue Pharma, and they are, that company is the one that is responsible for OxyContin. And uh, it is absolutely astounding to read all of the things that the Sackler family did in order to promote this highly addictive narcotic uh, and all of the marketing and all of the publications that the family owned in order to put their message out about this highly addictive pain med uh, and just how incredibly deceptive they were so that they could keep earning their billions. And that is, I'm still mad about this book, which is why I'm putting it in my number two spot. For a while it was in the number three, and now it's gonna be in the number two, because it is the book I keep thinking about. It is the book that just makes me wanna tear my hair out about what happened. Now there's some stuff that has happened since this book was published. Um, you, there was another lawsuit that was in there, there's also a documentary on Netflix called The Pharmacist that has the same, that talks about the OxyContin uh, epidemic as well. And so, yeah, really interesting, fascinating book, maddening uh, piece of this and how they, well, at the time they're spreading this poison out there, they're also trying to get their names on art in institutes and uh, wings and galleries and things like that. And so since this, all started coming to light, those institutions have started removing the Sackler name. But, oh, so frustrating this book, which is why I'm putting it in number two, because it has really stuck with me. So my number one book has been number one in my rankings all along. It's also the first book I read because I was so engaged with just flipping through it. I wanted to see what this book was about. And I am so thrilled that I got to read this for the BookTube Prize because it is Chasing Me to My Grave, an artist memoir of the Jim Crow South by Winfred Rembert. This book won the Pulitzer in nonfiction in biography. Uh, absolutely incredible that it won that. Uh, the book follows the life of Winfred Rembert uh, and is also it, it documents his life through his art. He was an artist who worked in leather uh, and his artwork that's in this book is absolutely astounding. And also, whoever edited this book did a magnificent job because there are, you'll turn a page in this book and come across a piece of the artwork and it's just pulls you into the story. I think I read this over just a couple of days. It is absolutely incredible, um, the artwork that's in this book. I was hugely impressed. I recommended it to a friend of mine who is very into art and has a lot of artwork um, in, their, in their home. But there are some very difficult scenes documented in artwork in here. He had a very difficult life. Uh, he was in prison 
prison for a period of time. Uh, he really, he also was almost lynched. Um, and that storyline was just so incredibly powerful and so incredibly moving. Um, very difficult to read at times, but oh man, this artwork that's in here, I wish I could see it in person because I'm sure it's brilliant um, that some of this was done in uh in leather so but it's the story uh, that he how he learned to work in leather he learned to work in leather in prison uh which was amazing uh, as well that's a, that's really where he started but my number one is definitely chasing me to my grave no other book that i read in this group was able to unseat it from the top spot it stayed in there through the whole time i was reading the book two prize so uh i this was also this is also one by the way that's very hard not to do a video about right now because it did just win the pulitzer um but I couldn't until the book two prize uh, quarterfinals were announced. So, um, but this is one I am considering. This is a library book that I want to buy now because it is just so amazing. Um, I'm I'm so thrilled that it won the Pulitzer. I hope it goes on in the book two prize. I think this one out of all the books would be the one I'd be most disappointed if it doesn't go on to the next round. So, chasing me to my grave was my number one. <laughs> so, yay! I'm very happy to be done. It's only May 11th when I'm recording this, so I'm, I have a few weeks now <laughs> till the announcements are out or two weeks until the announcements are out. I don't know if I'm judging the next round. I'm, I'm still waffling, but I have so much reading to catch up on for other projects that I don't know that I'll be judging necessarily the next round. Um, but it has been such a pleasure to get to participate as a judge this year. If you haven't judged and you want to, you do not have to have a booktube channel in order to do so. Um, subscribe to the booktube prize channel, which I'll leave linked in the description below for you. And you'll see the announcement or the call for judges to come out early or towards the end of this year. Uh, and it's as simple as signing up. I will warn you, it is a commitment. Six books in two months is a lot, especially if you have other things that you're reading. Uh, but it is very fulfilling because I don't know if I would have picked up this group of six books. Um, the only one I owned was the Doctors Blackwell. So uh, yeah, absolutely incredible experience. So happy I was able to participate. I hope you are, hope you enjoy this video and my rankings. If you want to see a long version where I talk about each book after I read it, go check out my long version of the video. And with that, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks. Bye.